Democratic candidate for governor of Georgia, Stacey Abrams, lost her election rematch last month against incumbent Governor Brian Kemp. However, her activism and her outreach over the years has really been credited for helping turn Georgia into a competitive swing state. Last week, the state reelected Senator Raphael Warnock in a key victory for Democrats. So here to discuss that is former Georgia gubernatorial candidate, author, political leader, Stacey Rock Abrams. Star, the list goes on and on. All yes. of the adjectives yes. in there. So good to have you there. Thank so you. happy to have you here. Thank you both. So before we talk about the children's book, which I do want to definitely yes. get into, I have three little kids, but first let's talk about this. Senator Raphael Warnock was the only Democrat to win a statewide mm -hmm. office in Georgia last week. What does this mean for the state of Georgia and beyond? It means that we're continuing to move forward. Uh, we have to remember it's been 20 plus years of Republican domination. In 2020, 2021, we started to make that shift. It didn't happen overnight and it's not going to happen overnight, but our job is to continue to build within the coalition of voters that we have, not only a sense of possibility, but using Reverend Warnock, Senator Warnock as an example, a sense of opportunity and achievement. And you have been credited with changing uh, the whole landscape when it comes to black voter uh, turnout. Uh, in fact, we got some numbers for you. The average turnout for black voters in three southern states, we're talking about Georgia, Louisiana, and North Carolina, uh, was around 26% lower than it was for white voters in this year's general election. In fact, again, the black share of the electorate in these states hit its lowest level since 2006. What needs to be done? Well, one of the issues is that we have to keep talking to black and brown voters. They cannot be afterthoughts. And while Georgia saw a dip in its turnout, it was still much higher than we've seen in years past in midterm elections. And so I think it's always important to not just learn your losses, but learn your lessons. And one of the lessons is we have to keep talking to voters who don't see themselves in the electorate, who don't hear their issues discussed by candidates until the last few days. It's like being invited to the party at the very last minute when you know everyone else got their invitations months ago. And so the work that I do, the work I am so committed to, is about engaging voters year-round because it's not just about somebody winning an election. It's about your life getting better, and that should be our mission. Okay, so now that the midterms are over, I know you probably get asked this a lot, but we have to ask, what's next for you? How likely are you to run for office again? I may run again, but I've always said that it's not about the title, it's about the work. And that's why I was so proud to help Raphael get elected. It's why I was so excited to work with candidates up and down the ballot. It's why I've been doing this for more than a decade. I don't know what's next for me in the political realm, but I do know that in the policy space, my job is to keep talking about issues like the fact that in Georgia, we have 7,000 disabled people on a waiting list. And it would only cost $35 million to let them go home and let them have access to in-home services. So I'm working with a group called NewDisabledSouth.org to help them lift up this issue as we head into this next year. And so it's about talking about the work and getting the work done. Now uh, you have a new children's book out, and this is pretty cool because it talks about uh, the power of reading. I call it, you know, little girl power, but also power for little boys out there. What is it that you want us to take away from this book here? And it's also based on a true story, your childhood. So it's based on a true story. I'm the daughter of a librarian, and my mom's a librarian. My dad actually is dyslexic and was undiagnosed until he was in his 30s. So he struggled to read. And when I was a little kid, one of my closest friends in elementary school was a young woman who was from Vietnam and we worked together. I was a little shy and she was having difficulty reading and we became good friends. And about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, she sent me a note saying, I don't know if you remember me, but it meant a lot that you and I would bond through books. And so when I was writing Stacy's Remarkable Books, which is the sequel to Stacy's Extraordinary Words, Julie's story, my story with her uh, was just top of mind. So your mom was a librarian. So yes. were you under the covers like me reading with a flashlight oh, every night? The calculator where you could have the red nut. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it was even better. My mom was a college librarian and we went to daycare at the call or kindergarten pre-K at the college. So we would sleep in the stacks when, oh. as you know, when you know, mm -hmm. school might be over before parents are ready to go mm -hmm. home. And I literally would sleep with books. And my mom and dad made sure that reading was just so important to my five siblings and me. And so it's always a joy to get to write for kids. And parents will appreciate this because we know kids <laughs> like to read the same book over and over and over again. And parents can kind of get a little frustrated. You said you wrote this with that in mind. Absolutely. So I know that if I write a good book that kids are going to want to read it, I don't want the parents to resent me. <laughs> so <laughs> my mission is to write a book that parents want to read, or at least they don't get tired of it after the 15th or 25th reading. So it you, is a you never, I trust it. Yeah, never ending positive story with you. Uh, again, I used to cover Stacy in Atlanta when I worked for 11 Alive. And even back then, before you were a household name, we knew there was something uh, special about you. So keep doing your thing. Thank and you. And representing so Spelman College, by Absolutely. the way. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Stacy's Remarkable Books is available now. Author and political leader Stacy Abrams. Again, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you both. This is an honor. 
Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.